Hello, audience. I'm not the audience. I'm the person who makes things for the audience. Robert Evans, this is my podcast, Behind the Bastards. Only this week it's not, because this is part two of Garrison's uh, armed coup against, uh, you know, to usurp all of my powers. So, um, once again, not okay, yeah, an armed it's my t- coup. If you just say, no, you don't let know that, somebody Sophie. take over. I, I, there's guns near him. Um, I'm Robert Evans. And I, this I brought is, a baton. He brought a baton. Just want to like say the one that, that, that broke my hand. He's 18 because um, that statement was very sketchy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's 18. It's fine. There's um, this is behind the it. bastards. We talk about bad people. And this is part two of the episode that Garrison wrote, uh, which is the first reversing of the status quo we've had on this show. Garrison, hi. What are we? What are we? What are we? What are we talking about today? We last episode we were talking about the history of Focus on the Family and particularly James Dobson, its founder, J Dobbs. Today we're going to mainly talk about gay conversion therapy. Um, Woo! Yeah, yeah, this will be a fun one. A nice little light, light topic. But we're going to start off with something actually a little bit more fun. Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna ease our way kind of into the less fun things. Um, so yeah, we you know, last week we we're talking about focus on the family, how it started. You know, Dobson getting very politically active during the Reagan years, with getting put on a whole lot of weird government boards that he was not qualified for. Um, and then we learned about his media empire. And rem- remember that database that he was putting together? With yeah, like yeah, the gigantic mailing huge, list. Huge, like millions and millions of people's mailing lists that all the Republican lawmakers wanted to become friends with Dobson so that they could have access to this mailing list. Right? Yeah, yeah. Why else would you be friends with someone? <laughs> That's the only reason I know you is your incredible mailing list. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, anyone who communicated with them was added to this mailing list. Huge thing. Um, in... Uh, in 2003, so like the last time you heard about this mailing list was around like 95. It's when it had like 4 million names. So it's only been added to since. It's hard to come up with exact numbers because they didn't really talk about it that much because it's, you know, they shouldn't. Because, like for them, it's not in their best interest to really publicly talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, then people will think that they're just numbers on a list to <laughs> these people who are pretending to be spiritual advisors. Yeah. 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 Pretending to be your friend. Yeah. So in, in 2003, Dobson actually stepped down as acting president and the chief executive officer of Focus on the Family. He, he was still uh, remaining like the figurehead over the organization, just less involved in day-to-day activities. Um, as we'll learn, most of the day-to-day activities in the 2000s were being extremely homophobic um, and campaigning against the gay agenda. And, 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 and what is, Garrison, give me a heads up, yeah. what is the gay agenda? Well, we'll find out what... Dobson okay. thinks it is. Okay. It, what they think is the gay agenda. Because like that's term that's a term that they used. Okay. Yeah. They kind of got very popular it, for If I remember being a conservative kid well enough, the bulk of the gay agenda had to do with the TV show Will and Grace. But I don't remember much else from from my Republican days. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get into details on what they think the gay agenda is. Um but before we get to that kind of depressing stuff, um Let's let's ease into the most funny homophobic thing that Dobson and Focus on the Family ever ever did. Oh, good! I love a little lighthearted <laughs> homophobia from a man with incredible wealth and power. Um, so this is this is probably the best thing that's ever been done with this database ever. In October two thousand eight, about a month before the the the, the two thousand eight presidential election, Dobson secretly wrote and sent out this letter titled "A Letter from a Christian in two thousand twelve." I, okay. I would love to just read this letter in its yeah, entirety, do but it. but because it's all of because it is absolutely magnificent, but it's it's over nine thousand words, which is about as long as these two podcasts combined. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about that's about two hours with commentary. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I will have to go over some of the highlights and kind of give just a general gist. Um. The concept of this letter. It's spelled. It's pronounced gist. Gist? Gist. It's a general gist? It's a general gist. That doesn't sound right. I know, because that was a lie, Garrison. Yeah, that, that was a lie. That doesn't to try to make you be as bad at pronouncing things as I is. <laughs> the concept is that this letter was written in 2012 um, by a Christian warning those in 2008 what will happen if the then far-left radical Barack Obama was elected in 2008. Um, I, I will just read off the opening of this letter, just so you get kind of the mood of what the piece is going to be. And here, here's, here's how it starts. October 22nd, 2012. 
Dear friends, I can hardly oh. sing the Star Spangled Banner anymore. When I hear the words, oh, oh say, does that Star Spangled Banner wave over the land of the free, I get tears in my eyes and a lump in my throat. Now in October of 2012, after seeing what's happened the past four years, I don't think I can still answer yes to that question. We are not the land of the free and the home of the brave. Many of our freedoms have been taken away by a liberal Supreme Court and a Democratic majority in both the House and the Senate. And hardly any brave citizen dares to resist the new government policies anymore. The 2008 election was closer than anyone expected, but Barack Obama still won. Many Christians voted for Obama. Younger evangelicals actually provided him with the needed margin to defeat John McCain. But they didn't think he would really follow through with all the far-left policies that had made his career. They were wrong. (laughs) Far-left policies like doing everything a Republican would do except for being shitty on abortion and to gay people. Well, even in 28, Obama wasn't even for gay marriage. No, he was not. I, um, yeah. 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 yeah I, like, basically a Republican, but not as not bigoted as much. So, like, yeah. I, I wasn't around, but I wasn't paying attention to the 28 election because I was like six. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I don't. <laughs> let's not let's not dwell too long on that. Continue. So, like, I don't like I've I've heard legends of what. Obama's campaign was like like I heard I I heard it was like very progressive in nature but didn't actually get followed through and so like I'm trying to understand from a Republican perspective like were they actually like did it actually make sense they were scared of like this far left radical or was it now with Biden where like no he's not at all like he's not even pretending to be (sighs) he he was a little more he he definitely was playing to the progressive side whereas Biden's playing to the conservative side but like the stuff he was talking about like there was talk of you know improving health care he was going to close Guantanamo Bay he was gonna not get the U.S. into wars but like he did all there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of like he wasn't promising like socialized full socialized medicine he wasn't promising like he was promising you know improvements but he wasn't promising like we're gonna be like you know have an nhs like the uk and he wasn't promising like basic yeah. income or yeah. like he was not yeah. he was running for the towards the progressive wing but like like you said he wasn't even backing gay marriage at that point yeah. and yeah. and here's the thing even though or marijuana and even though barack obama is toted as this progressive in reality joe biden is more progressive than barack obama which you looking at your face now, you're like, huh? Yeah. But if you're going off of records, if you're going off of record, you're not in what Biden is running on now is technically you could consider more progressive than what Obama did. Correct. That is, and looking at that, yeah. like their records, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're looking yeah. at like the, I guess, social side of it or the, you know, PR side of it, you definitely people looked at Barack Obama as this extreme liberal progressive yeah. movement when it it really wasn't anything of that. It was just so, he was just a, a Democrat. He was a Democrat <laughs> after like the worst Republican ever had been president for eight Say years. Say so. that yeah. in twenty twenty, Robert. I don't know. Evans. I'm still I'm still giving the edge to Bush because Trump has not started two new wars. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, we'll see. Trump still has the chance to be worse. But at this point in 2020... We're gonna agree to disagree. Garrison, finish uh, your sentences. Because yeah. I'm yeah. gonna punch Robert through the iPad. I mean, Trump got a lot more Americans. I'll say this. Trump got was a worse president domestically because he sure, got a lot of sure. Americans killed. I, would, I agree with that. I take George back, W. Bush did a hell of a lot more international it, damage. Yeah. And so... What, what this letter is going to be detailing for this far-left agenda is written by a conservative who was born in the 30s, um, who is, again, secretly wrote this and sent it out to everyone on his database, mm-hmm. right? So, like, it's just, they, they just receive a letter from a Christian in 2012. That's, oh, God. <laughs> right? So, like, this is the concept of the letter, and he's going to describe all of the things that he thinks is going to be, is going to be doing. I bet these have all happened. Yeah, these things are all, all absolutely exactly what happened um so the the first the main problem that the author secretly james dobson writes about (laughs) is the is the supreme court because obama makes a six to three far left supreme court yeah imagine having one party 
with that kind of dominance of the Supreme. What a nightmare. What a nightmare that would be if yeah. we had a six to three Supreme Court leaning on one side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfathomable. Yeah. Could never happen. Um, so I'm going to read the first major change the far left liberals Tell us. enact. Um, so I'm going to start, I'm going to quote from the letter here. The most far reaching transformation of the American society came from the Supreme Court's stunning affirmation in early 2010 that homosexual, quote, marriage was a, quote, constitutional right that had to be respected in all 50 states because laws barring same-sex marriage val- of they they broke the equal protections clause in the constitution so he he he, brought, he, he, he discusses how he thinks same-sex marriage is actually not constitutionally protected because of these dumb things whatever he gets very mad he writes, suddenly homosexual marriage was the law on the land in all 50 states. No state legislator, no state Supreme Court, no state constitutional amendment, not even Congress had any power to change it. The Supreme Court had ruled and the discussion was over. This was a blatant example of, the, of, uh, of creating law by the court instead of just interpreting it. For homosexual marriage was mentioned nowhere in the Constitution, nor would any of the authors have imagined same-sex, quote, marriage could be derived from their words. So this is the first huge change that happens in America. Because I mean, of that Supreme did Court. happen. It not by 2012. In, in not, yeah. But not in 2010. It happened in 2015. Yeah. Um, much later on. But so now the fun part of this letter is that we get to hear about all of the bad things that have happened because of this ruling. Because this ruling is very important. I'm excited this to ruling, hear how it's collapsed because, society. Um, if, if you remember from the last episode, in 2004, Dobson wrote this whole book called... Um, uh, Marriage under fire. Um, yeah, I do. Maybe or not. That. I mentioned that in the last episode. I, I know. I, I mentioned. It, I mentioned it later, um, which is all about you know what will happen to this country if homosexual marriage becomes a thing. So now he gets to write this very fun piece of fan fiction, of or just excellent s- speculative fiction about about what this change does. So the the, the letter details far reaching changes due, due to this decision. Uh, the first impact the letter writes is that. The Boy Scouts are no longer an organization. This is the first thing wow. he cites. Yeah, okay. As, they banned the Boy Scouts. So, uh, the Boy Scouts, quote, chose to disband rather than be forced to obey the Supreme Court decision that they would have to hire homosexual scoutmasters. Which just sounds God. like good workplace discrimination laws to me. You know, it's, <laughs> like, yeah, it's that, one of the reasons that's kind of wild to me, just, I guess it's not surprising because, again, I grew up in this world. But the um the first gay person that I ever like knew personally was um a kid about a year older than me who I was in academic decathlon with in high school and we were both in the Boy Scouts and he was about to finish his Eagle Scout and one day we were like alone in this little classroom that we had and he just kind of blurted out that he was gay and then asked me not to tell anybody because he didn't want to lose his Eagle and that was like I was still like very hardcore like like right wing at this point but that was like my first That was, in retrospect, kind of one of the first cracks in my worldview because it was like, well, okay, I like this guy. This guy's a friend of mine. Like, why is he so scared of admitting this thing? That doesn't seem good. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good thing to have in society. It's a little off topic. No, but but yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Like, that that, that is a real, when I was, was, when I was growing up in the conservative circle, that was actually a big fear is if. Is if gays are allowed in the Boy Scouts? Oh yeah, that's gonna, that, was, that was a that was a hotly debated topic on a yes, lot of was. Christian sites. Yeah, um, it still is, I think. Yeah, but, but yeah. stuff has changed since then. Without yeah. without how that Boy Scouts as an organization operates, where it's less of a it's less of a big deal. But it used to be really really a huge big Robert, deal. Robert, were you a Boy Scout? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot of great stuff in the Boy Scouts. I really enjoyed my time in the Scouts. Not to whitewash the various significant problems that organization has, but um, yeah, it was it was a good experience for me. So the, the letter also details about the Boy Scouts, um, quote, it had became increasingly difficult for the Boy Scouts to find a meeting place anyway, because in 2009, Congress and President Obama signed an expansion of the Civil Rights Act, which extended federal civil rights protections to people engaging in homosexual behavior. So the Proud Boys have been kicked out of all public facilities. No, no not Proud Boys. Sorry, I'm thinking of, we have, there's a big fascist rally tomorrow, so I'm thinking of Proud Boys. But no, the Boy Scouts had, had been kicked out of all <laughs> public facilities. Because so there's like, the Boy Scouts have become public enemy number one yeah. under Obama's yeah. justice system. Yeah. I love it. So they've been kicked out of all public buildings because they don't, because of their homosexual rules. Think of stuff. how much more fun today would be if the government <laughs> was going full bore after the Boy Scouts and not Antifa, just running down 12-year-old 
barrels in the street, throwing them into unmarked vans, Cub Scout troops disappearing in the night. Because they don't like gay people. That's why the government's yeah. letting them down. Yeah. 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 Maybe they didn't tie one of their rope knots. Weebelos the right in Guantanamo. <laughs> oh my God, that would be funny. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry, Garrison. Please continue. Mm -hmm. Other aspects of this far left failing state are that schools now teach gender science and incorporate queer studies into their sex ed. Oh, no. (laughs) As a result, quote, tens of thousands of Christian teachers either quit or were fired. And uh, many Christian private schools were chose to shut down rather than be forced to, quote, obey the law and teach that homosexuality and heterosexuality are both morally good choices. <laughs> so all these Christian schools shut down because they would have been forced to teach that both homosexuality and heterosexuality are, like, okay. Yeah. And... The, this is the, and tens of thousands Dob- of teachers quit, quit rather than do that. Then do that. Also, Dobson was very upset that je- you talk about gender now in sex ed. No, <laughs> I, I don't think we should talk about gender at all. I don't think there should be genders. I think I everyone mean, it, should just, I think when it's time to breed, you should just have one large group of people ejaculate <laughs> into a pool and then another group of people swim around in it. And if children happen, that's the only thought anyone ever gives to it. If if you can incorporate that into a gender abolition argument, maybe you can get Dobson on board based on I what could. he wrote I here. I think he and I are allies on this. You no can, more gender. Yeah, we can we can we can figure something out. We can mm-hmm. we can we can email him. He's Ro- still around. He's Sophie, still alive. You look horrified, Robert. No, don't think about just a network of, of semen allies. pools all around the country. Trust me. It it's it it could work, Sophie. I'm no so more sorry, gender. Garrison. Please continue. Just a bunch Robert, of Warm, salty not, swimming pools. You're not, okay. you're not leading today. Speaking, speaking of speaking of getting children with no homes, which I feel like the swimming pool idea would probably get some kids with not with not many homes. Um, the, all Christian adoption agencies have been shut down because they refuse to let gay couples adopt people. So that that's a big thing in the Christian scene is Christian adoption agencies. I I know about this from experience mm-hmm. um, dealing with those adoption agencies. Um, yeah, they this big they they hate it when a gay person gets to get one of the kids. Yeah, um, there and was they that. try to avoid it at all costs. Yeah, um, and I was, st- stuff has changed now. But you know, Dob- Dobson's writing here. That this in, is in, around in the his, time in, that his, family had to like drive, like flee from a state or some shit. They yeah. were like being chased or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So in this they, fan fiction, Dobson writes here that they just they, they they just all shut down instead of letting gay people adopt. Yeah, adopt that kids. scans. Um. None of that is surprising. Yeah, and one of my favorite parts of this first section about the changes that like gay rights made is that um, in 2012, no one's allowed to read aloud uh, the Bible on TV and radio. <laughs> because yes, I remember when they banned the Bible. <laughs> Here's uh, quoting the letter: uh, "The Bible can no longer be freely preached over radio or television stations when the subject matter includes such offensive quote doctrines, such as criticizing homosexual behavior or other offensive um, other offensive sections." Uh, the Supreme Court agreed that these should be kept off the air, prohibited as quote hate speech. That is likely to incite violence and discrimination. These policies follow broadcasting and print restrictions that were in place prior to 28 in Canada, which is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I don't know if he knows that a lie. Knows that's a lie. Cause like I was in, I was a Christian in Canada in a very conservative cultish environment. And no, I had friends whose parents would like, preach hate speech on the radio no publicly. no no i'm pretty sure the that's mounties not... kill everybody who so much as looks at a bible near a radio that's canadian law it's right under the thing about you making it illegal to falsify maple syrup yeah um yeah, the famous canadian legal code no bibles lots of syrup also the mount, other main thing mounties do is hunt down indigenous people and beat them up yeah, yeah those yeah, are the three main yeah. things they if they three see if they, if they see a bible they lose it they see you faking maple syrup, they lose it. If they see an indigenous person, they freak out. Mm-hmm. The three things everyone knows about the Mounties. The thin, kind of reddish line. The thin line, reddish right? line. They, re- they wear red. The thin yeah. horse-wearing line. Yeah, the thin... Horse line? Horse line. Yeah. See, but, this does play into my theory that horses are beside... Anyway. You anyway, know, you know anyway. horses kill me, right? Yeah. Deathly allergic to horses. I didn't know if that. I get, if I get near one, it's bad. See, everybody, like, I was right when I said we need horse genocide now. Human beings need 
D- sorry. All right. Let's just go on. Uh, speaking of uh, health related issues, like not being around horses, um, physicians and lawyers who reserved to uh, who re- who refused to serve queer people lost their licenses. Um, if if churches refuse to be used for LGBT weddings, they lose their tax exempt status. <sighs> Um, which is oh. actually that's kind of an interesting idea. <laughs> I mean, I have quite I have my own opinions on if churches should be tax exempt in any way. But like, yeah. if a lawyer and doctor like refuses to do their job on someone because they're queer, maybe they should lose their license. I, like, I agree with that with lawyers and doctors. Like, I don't think I think it's kind of a fake boogeyman the idea that churches would be forced to marry oh, yeah. anybody. Like, because it's never happened. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think if you're a fucking doctor and somebody's like dying and you're like, oh, but gay, icky, like, yeah, you <laughs> shouldn't a, get to a be a doctor. Is that a rainbow pin? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I can't do this. Like, I just as a guy who carries a medical kit around, if we're at like a rally and I see like a fucking proud boy get shot and I have the ability to stop them from bleeding to death, I'll try to stop them from bleeding to death because it's just what you do. If you're not right. going to do that, you have no right to call yourself a fucking doctor. Yep. So here's another section about the church, the church changes, um, quote, while churches are still free to turn down homosexual applicants for the job of senior pastor, churches and parachurch organizations are no longer free to reject homosexual applicants for staff positions such as part time youth pastor and, ca- and director of counseling. Those that have rejected homosexual applicants have also had their tax exempt status revoked. I love how granular they are about how much the Obama administration was going to interfere <laughs> with, like, the um, the staffing decisions <laughs> of, of such, local churches. There's 9,000 words in the letter. Yeah, like they the, get into a lot of detail. It's uh, He couldn't even get the website working for the shitty health care plan he gave us. Like, what are you... Come on. <laughs> you think he's yeah, going to be like, no, you can't... Senior staff are allowed to... You can, you can you can refuse to hire gay for them, but if you hire a youth pastor, they have to be allowed to be like what the, how did, what are you imagining them sitting down and doing? It's nine thousand I'm cutting out so much yeah. like small details he adds on. It's astonishing. We would be here for two hours. It's just astonishing. Oh, it's real. It's really a great letter. Um, one of the few semi-accurate predictions he actually made was that um don't ask, don't tell um got ended. Yes. Um, but with the weird addition that Dobson says new LGBT people enrolling in the military are given a special bonus for enlisting into military service to compensate for past discrimination. Ah, uh, yes, so, I remember that. <laughs> the gay bounty that the army gives out. So they get gay people get paid extra for being in the military because they were discriminated against in the past. So yeah, that, that sounds like a thing that the army does. <laughs> that that sounds like the army. <laughs> Um, so again, here he, he restates, if nurses refuse to help patients with abortions, they'll lose their job. And if doctors um, uh, refuse, they lose their licenses to, de- to deliver babies in any state, all mandated by federal law. So as, as, as added on to, like, if you refer to serve, serve queer people, if you refuse to help with an abortion, if you're a nurse, you're fired. If you're a doctor, you lose your license to, to deliver babies. So, like, you can still be a doctor, but you just can't assist in the delivering of babies in any state. Which is That's a weird decision so Dobson weird. makes to speculate about. Yeah, I can like it, it, it's this thing <laughs> like what that what? people who are it's this thing that I see on the right and on the religious right in particular, where they imagine that all everyone but them thinks about is how to hurt them. So like Obama who had a lot on his plate <laughs> when he became president. I don't know, you don't remember this, Garrison, but like the, the entire United States was about to collapse financially. Yeah. Um, and it even, it, well, maybe not as dire as the place we are in now, but pretty fucking dire situation. And like, it was just a disaster area of a country. Um, and they're thinking he's going to be like super focused, like laser focused on changing internal policy in a bunch of like small local churches just to be <laughs> evil Obama. He's very evil. It's amazing. Well, you know, Obama was the Antichrist. That's what I, that's what I heard as a kid. Yeah, yeah, he sure was. Yeah, I remember that when he yep. opened the seventh seal and let loose the hounds of hell. <laughs> it was a know. weird. Garrison, it was the October surprise in 2012. The seven seals of hell. <laughs> yeah, Robert, do, do you know what won't release the seven sins of hell? Uh, and open I up, I don't seal? accept 
anyone to advertise on this show unless I think there's a decent chance they're the Antichrist. Okay, so do, do you know who will open the Seven Seals of uh, Hell? Possibly. Ooh. Possibly. Possibly. Allegedly. Allegedly. Possibly, um, are some Potentially. Of the, some of these products and services that Erotically. sponsor the show. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Products. Hi, we're back. Ah, uh, we're porn. What? Yeah, Garrison, don't say porn. Garrison, you <laughs> a- were just apparently eighteen. God damn. Yeah, apparently, it. apparently God porn damn is it, everywhere. Robert. No, porn's everywhere. This is not on me. This is no. This is Dobson. Yeah, this is on James Dobson. No, porn is everywhere now. Uh, back, back, back to the letter. Uh, porn everywhere. <laughs> it's a huge problem in America now. Gas stations, grocery stores, newsstands, all places that kids can easily find porn magazines everywhere. Littered. God, imagine if kids could easily find porn. <laughs> so, like, this is another thing where Dobson was like r- right, but in the wrong way. I mean, like, it's like he was imagining porn magazines on all these grocery wait, store this stands. Is 2012. Well, this is 2012. And like, the funny we don't thing have about, cell phones? Yeah. Come on, well, like, so like, Dobson. This letter, I guess, so the letter was written by Dobson in 28 from a Christian in, tw- in 2012, right? So it was it was written in, t- in 2008 in, from the perspective of someone in tw- 2012. Um, but yeah, he says another big problem now is that porn's everywhere because of, because of uh, new rulings under the First Amendment. <laughs> is that now that porn can be dis- displayed in any, anywhere, gas stations, gro- grocery stores, newsstands, all places where kids can now find porn because of the First Amendment. Great. Um, I, I mean, the funny thing about that is that because of <laughs> smartphones and access to stuff like that, kids have more access to pornography than they ever have. And your generation also has less sex than yes. previous generations. And we're kind of the generation that understands concepts of consent yeah. kind of more than yeah. any other teenage kind of generation seems like in the past. like the opposite thing happened. Yeah. It's and like it when might you pro- be fine. <laughs> when you provide some information, even if it's bad, the kids will still yeah. look up other information. And then some of that will be eventually good if they, you know, go to actual like medical sites. Yeah. It, and it, then, seem, it seems broadly speaking like we're fine. Well, on that. Anyway, um, besides on something less fun than porn, um, in, by, by, by 2012, it's illegal for citizens to own guns in eight states. The letter writes, quote, inner city violent crime has increased dramatically due to people not allowed to have guns in eight states. Um, in, uh, in 2010, what? yeah, I'm, I'm just going to move on. Like that, that's all he really writes about it is you can't have guns in some states. I think Oregon's listed as one of the states he speculates doesn't have guns I anymore. I just don't think which... he's a very good writer. <sighs> no, he's, I he's don't not. think so either. He's not. Um, and uh, according to um, uh, Dobson, in 2010, Obama will begin uh, drawing troops from Iraq. Then later on, al-Qaeda operatives from Syria and Iran poured in and overtook the Iraqi security forces. Further emboldening the terrorists, Obama caused um, uh, uh, no, uh, Obama ceased the mass wiretap ring of all alleged terrorists in the United States unless a warrant was first obtained. <laughs> so that's that really emboldened the terrorist. Is that yeah. now you can't, the they can't the government can't just wiretap any phone they want in the oh, states. No. Yeah. Oh no. That definitely never happened in Portland over the summer. No, with- they certainly did not wiretap a bunch of activists' phones for the crimes of modest to minor property damage. Yeah. Um, since 2009, there's been four terrorist bomb attacks in the United States. No arrests have been made. <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember that when the entire national security establishment said, well, what if we just stopped giving a shit about Islamic terrorism? <laughs> Quote, President Obama has moved to deepen U.S. ties and U.S. trade with communist regimes in Cuba, Venezuela, and Bolivia. Regimes that have long enjoyed the favor of far left factions in the Democratic Party. I, I don't even know what he's trying to say there. I, Neither do I. I uh, yeah, it's 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 a, a um, fantasy novel. I, Iran dropped a nuclear bomb on an, an Israeli city. Oh, I remember that. Uh, demanding Israel give huge amount quote huge amounts of land back to Palestine. First off, Israel doesn't even have huge amounts of land. <laughs> like not to say they didn't take a lot of Palestine's land, but the whole area is like the size of Jersey. Yes. Like, yeah. Um, Obama said he abhorred what Iran did in dropping a nuclear bomb, uh, but he hoped that the U.S. would be a part of an international peacekeeping force sanctioned by the U.N., but the Muslim nations in the, U- in the U.N. have so far prevented any action. That's a, that's a quote from Dobson. The, the Muslim nations in the U.N. have prevented any action from, from the U.N. assisting in peacekeeping. <laughs> yeah. That's, 
<laughs> yeah, that's why Obama uh, didn't didn't take any actions in any foreign Muslim dominated countries um, <laughs> at at any point uh, in his administration. Yeah. That's why there were no military actions taken against Muslims at all by the Obama administration. So, like, you, you know more about this kind of stuff than I do, but like, if Obama, you know, in 2010, withdrew withdrawal troops from Iraq, you, this job talk is about Al Qaeda operatives in Syria and Iran pouring in and overtaking the Iraqi security forces. How how likely that w- would would that have been from Al Qaeda in 2010 overtaking yeah. Iraqi security forces? I mean, it's ironic because we we pulled out in I think 2011, but uh, short, short, shortly later, yeah, be uh, by the at the demand of the Iraqi government, and a large chunk of the country did get overtaken, largely by Iraqis um, who were other angry and extremists uh and yeah i don't know it's very like it's funny because they got aspects of that right but in the wrong way like iran are the deadly enemies of isis um who who despise them because they're they're shia um and you did have a lot of iraq get taken over but most of the paramilitaries doing it were either foreign fighters or other iraqis and the leadership cadre that was in charge of the whole thing were all a bunch of people who had met because the united states under george bush threw them together in the same prison camp which was basically a big college for terrorists camp buka so yeah that's that's pretty funny i i would i would say good good yeah. i'm glad someone was able to talk about that who knew more about that than i did we, we now pivot to healthcare in, in, in the letter. So I'm just going to read off uh, this, this great quote. Quote, the new Congress under President Obama passed a nationalized, quote, single payer healthcare system in which the U.S. government is the provider of healthcare in the United States, following the pattern of nationalized medicine in the United Kingdom and Canada. The great benefits. Uh, yes. the, so, yeah, so far, sounds great yeah, to me. Yeah, I wish that had happened. As someone who lived in Canada and got free healthcare for years, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, but I bet they forced you not to have... I bet you weren't allowed to have kids anymore because you're Christian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, that was the one That yeah, was the one caveat. Yeah, they, they stopped was, you from... It was, yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. So, continue the quote. Um, the, the great benefit is that the medical care is now free for everyone. Yay! Um, Yay. Here, but here it is. If you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> now that health now that healthcare is free, it seems everyone wants more of it. Yay. The what waiting a terrible li- thing. The waiting list for prostate cancer surgery is three years. The waiting list for um ov- ovarian cancer is two years, just as the Canadian experience has shown prior to 2008 with its own nationalized healthcare. So in the US, only a small number of MRIs are performed, down 90% from 2008. Which isn't isn't true for how the Canadian no, health. No, there's, no. I mean, there's a whole section of our right wing lies about how the Canadian healthcare yeah. system works, which is very uh, frustrating. The only things that are important to know is that y'all yeah. live longer and you have lower r- rates of physician related death. Yeah, and like yeah. prostate cancer surgery isn't three years waiting time. Like there's no. they just they come up with these ridiculous lies about the Canadian healthcare system that I know is untrue because I have a grandma who relies on it to keep living, so I understand what the wait times are and how they operate. And the way American right wing conservative media talks about it is very frustrating. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. infuriating. Um, yeah, and uh, also about about MRIs because they are so expensive and they discover more problems that need treatment. They are almost never authorized, <laughs> which is how like just a weird thought process. Like thinking about them because they're too expensive. Like no, yeah. they're expensive now because of the way our because of how the insurance scam yeah, works. Yeah. I, one like, of the people I love most in the world had to get an MRI last year and delayed it by months and almost didn't get it because it cost, even with health insurance, cost her like a th- couple of thousand dollars. Yeah. Meanwhile, my German friends go to the doctor if they just feel like, ah, oh, something might be wrong. Maybe I'll just go get it checked oh, out. Oh, I have a tummy ache. Time yeah. to go to the doctor. Yeah, like the ridiculous nature, like Dobson doesn't understand this at all because like he's, he still thinks that like, MRIs will be expensive under nationalized medicine, which, no, like, the point of changing to a nationalized healthcare system is that, no, it won't. It'll be very cheap, because the only reason it's expensive now is because of the insurance scam. Yeah. I know Adam Conover did a really good episode on his television show dealing with this exact problem yeah. for how, like, this, like, whole price scam works in hospitals. Yeah, it's it's infuriating. Very frustrating. Um, the, the letter then fearmongers about some boring tax stuff that I don't care about. I, I don't care about Dobson's tax nightmare, so I'm just going to skip over it because it's just him being yeah. scared of taxes. Uh, whatever. Again, th- this, this guy was on the tax advisory panel under Reagan, which he shouldn't have been, like, but he what? was. That's I so... Don't, I d- <laughs> 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 so 
so I'm just gonna skip over because I don't I don't care. Um, probably the most ridiculous and incorrect and incorrectly correct. Like it's correct and it's not it's wrong, but it's kind of correct in this weird way. It's an accurate prediction in some ways, but we're still wrong. Um, the FCC imposed this new policy called the Fairness Doctrine, quote, which requires uh, you're quoting which requires radio stations to provide, quote, equal time for alternative views on political or policy issues. As a result, all radio stations have to provide equal time to contrasting views for every political or policy-related program they broadcast by talk radio shows such as Rush Limbaugh, Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Dennis Prager, uh, Hugh Hewitt, and broadcasters like Dr. James Dobson. What a Every terrible list talk sh- of individuals, uh. first of all. <laughs> Jesus Every conservative talk show is followed by an instant rebuttal of the program by a liberal watchdog group. So this is obviously very silly and very yeah. wrong. But what he got right is how YouTube works now for like... All of these, all this, like this whole genre of YouTube, where like you'll watch, you know, it's like a yeah. lefty watching a right wing person's program or a right wing person watching a lefty's program, and like pausing every ten seconds to give a rebuttal. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Which is a huge genre yeah, on YouTube. It's, it's like thirty percent of the U.S. economy at this point. Yeah, time. but like the idea that like radio stations would pause in real time on Rush Limbaugh to have like a left wing person give a rebuttal. It's <laughs> for every show. It's amazing. It's very funny. As opposed to like what actually happened, which is right wing media has only be- has become like the most dominant media block in the country by a substantial margin. After two years of Obama. Yeah. It only got much, much more powerful. Yeah. And I, I like that Dobson like subtly adds his name to the end of this list because again, yeah. he he like he wrote he, the like, letter. He like ghost wrote the letter. He like adds his name at the very end. Dr. James Dobson. I mean, it's uh, just it's just self promotion at its most slimy. That's just Dobson, baby. Yeah, so, so that Dobson was that was in two thousand. Okay, so the FCC passed that in two thousand nine. By two thousand ten, conservative talk radio had all been shut down. Yes, I do remember that. I, I, I remember I remember the nightmare when I couldn't hear Rush Limbaugh convince my parents that it was okay to glass the entire Middle East from the sky because some some dudes fucked up a building. Um, I do remember that. It so ruled. yeah, 2010 Sorry. that shut down. Just uh, in good news, the Justice Department filed criminal charges and civil charges against nearly all Bush administration officials that uh, that had involvement in the Iraq War. Ah, <laughs> a thing that would have <laughs> what a nice that would have massively improved the world we live in. That ah, God, <laughs> what a good, I want to live in this world. I, know, I, I desperately want to live in James Dobson's fantasy America. James Dobson's <laughs> fantasy world in which there are consequences for committing war crimes. <laughs> Oh, Not what a, a world! <laughs> um, Christian book publishers are all shut down because of anti-LGBT hate speech. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't support shutting down book publishers, but also it yeah, never it's stupid. Happened, so fuck it never happened. Yeah. Um, churches can no longer meet in public schools or any public places because of the new quote separation of church and they state be laws. Able to meet in public schools. <laughs> yeah, that is like, a problem. Actually, yeah, churches can no longer meet in public schools because of quote new separation of church and state laws. It does seem like that was always a violation of the separation of church and state. Uh, what with the operative word being separation. Separation. Um, okay. Christian homeschooling has effectively all been stopped in part because parents were now forced to not teach their kids that homosexual conduct is wrong or that Jesus is the only way to God since these ideas have been found to hinder students' social uh, adjustment and acceptance of other lifestyles and beliefs. That last part was quoting the letter there. Um, thousands of homeschooling parents had fled to Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> 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 the last bastion of Christianity, <laughs> New Zealand. So a massive refuge of Christian homeschooling parents have moved to New Zealand. And I'll finally, I'll finish talking about this piece of speculative fiction with this quote from the end of the letter. Many people thought Obama sounded so thoughtful, so reasonable. And during his campaign, after he'd won the Democratic nomination, he seemed to be moving to the center in his speeches, moving away from his far-left record. No one thought he would enact such a far-left extreme liberal agenda. But the record was all there for anyone to see. The agenda of the ACLU, the agenda of the liberal activist judges and their dissenting opinions, the agenda of the homosexual activists, the agenda of environmental activists, of the National Board of Education, the global warming activists, abortion rights activists, gun control activists, 
um, euthanasia supporters, one world government pacifists, far left groups in Canada and Europe. All these agencies, all, the, all these agendas were in plain sight. And all these groups provided huge support for Senator Obama. The liberal agenda was there, but too many people just didn't want to see it. <sighs> Heart, heartwarming. <laughs> God, the, I wish it, the far yeah. left agenda of the ACLU. Yeah. Who is actually doing really good stuff in Portland right now? Mm-hmm. They're helping yep. elves. Not no, get no, they're burning churches, Harrison. <laughs> they're burning churches. That's what the, it's the American Christian lighting on fire. They're showing up to the homes of homeschooling group. parents and scaring them away yeah. to New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what the ACLU is buying them up plane to. tickets to a better country. How dare they? So, like, the point of this letter was like, to scare young Christians who feel a little bit of hope that things can be better under Obama to be like, no, you don't understand how bad Obama is. It's going to be really bad. Now, the letter didn't do much because Obama still won. So yeah. even though it was sent off to like at least 10 million people anom- anonymously, which I mean, it's kind of a creepy thing to do. Like, why would you listen to this letter? Here's my anonymous <laughs> fantasy about tw- <laughs> like you just showed up at your house. You're like, what, what the fuck is this? I don't know. Yeah. Um, now, now that we've warmed up on that really great, Really great, heartwarming thing. The next half of the episode is going to be about the actual bad stuff. So Focus on the Family's active anti-LGBT activism really started in uh, 98 when they launched their, quote, ex-gay ministry. Um, and this ministry was called Love One Out. That was the title of what they... <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, I remember making fun of that because it sounds like like <laughs> Yeah, it like sounds like you're masturbating. It yeah, sounds like you're yeah. masturbating. Yeah. That's what it's... Uh, yeah. Love um, One Out. Love Jesus One Out. Christ. So, ex-gay is just a more polite term for gay conversion therapy. Um, it's like, no, I'm not getting converted from being gay, just I'm ex-gay. It's an ex-gay program. So, Love One Out, great name, is uh, is different from other gay conversion therapy programs because it's more because it's 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 more of a grift than any other one. Which I mean, they're all kind of grifty, but mm. this one specifically is more of a, more than a grift of anything because Love One Out isn't actually a program. It's a it's a quarterly traveling conference. Um, so it's, okay. <laughs> here's, here's their mission statement from one of their conference guidebooks, quote, to provide a Christ centered comprehensive conference, which will enlighten, empower and equip families, churches, youth leaders, educators, counselors, policymakers, and the gay community on the truth about homosexuality and its impact on culture, family and youth. So that is their mission statement they put in their little conference book. I don't um, like it. It's not good. So as you as you may have been able to pick up on, only actually like a fraction of those who attend are gay. A lot of the attendees are parents of teens, quote, struggling with homosexuality or like youth pastors, among others. So th- th- there's there is a fair there is a fair amount of gay people that, that, that still go to the conference one way or the other. We'll, we'll get to, we'll get to details for that later. But it's really a mix of like pastors People who think they're like counselors and then like concerned parents who are like, oh, no, my, yeah. I think my team could be gay. What can I do to stop this? And then also, you know, gay people were, were brought in against their will quite often, which we'll hear about the ramifications awesome. of later. Yeah, not, not, not really great. Um, so what Love One Out views as the cause of homosexuality is also a little bit different from some of the other gay um, like Christian conversion therapy programs. Uh, where, where other Christian organizations take, take the position that homosexuality is a choice, or they'll say it's natural to feel feelings, you just can't act on them. Then there's like the very classic, just pray the, pray the gay away type of stuff. It's like, there's all these like classical kind of things. Like, it's a choice, uh, it's, not a, it's not a choice, but you can choose not to act on it. Like, it's okay to feel these things, just you can't act. Um, yeah. uh, or just, you know, pray a lot. Um, the main position is that that that, uh, that loved one out is it takes is that homosexuality is socially caused, usually by mistakes made in parenting or childhood trauma. Because again, this is an organization called Focus on the Family that's only about giving very bad family and parenting advice. Yeah. So they're <laughs> like pit- childhood trauma, like getting beaten. <laughs> so the, their pitch for this is to parents like, hey, you were a crappy parent. That's why your child is now gay. Let us teach yeah. you how to be a better parent so your kid can't be gay. No, your kid, your kid turned out gay because you didn't hit him the way James Dobson taught you to hit him. You got to hit him a different way. You can't hit him the way you were hitting him. That's what makes him gay. You got to hit him 
him the Christian way. So remember, like James got James Dobson got his psychology degree in the sixties. In yep. se- in seventy three was when they ruled that homosexuality wasn't an illness. Yeah, I mean, I imagine a psychology degree um, in the sixties was mostly learning how to punch. Yeah. And yeah. it was learning that gays gays a disease yes. and it should be stopped, right? That was only changed in the seventies, which is still very very recent. Yeah, um, you know, in 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 comparison, right around like, the same time, know. women got the ability to have their own check to have their own checkbooks <laughs> and get mortgages, yeah. <laughs> which is why there was a massive divorce spike in the seventies yeah. because they, they were allowed to have economic control, which is why there was a huge divorce spike, which is very mm-hmm. funny to me. I mean, it's sad, but you know, because of it, the, I don't think that's the trauma. Sad, actually. No, 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 no it's, it's sad that they was a, it was a sad that he, oh, these people yes. were like trapped in yes, these abusive yes. marriages. That is sad, and then had to you know like get yeah. out only when yeah. they could allow to you know have an economic yeah. economic life. I'm very supportive of the fact that they yes. escaped. Very, yes, very it's supportive. It's sad that they were in that position. Absolutely, sad that it had yeah. to happen in the first place. Yeah. Um, so Love One Out advocates that homosexuality is quote preventable and treatable. Um, most of these conferences talk about prevention. Uh, and the causes of gayness, because obviously, despite their claim, there actually isn't an effective way to treat being gay, which they kind of they kind of know that. Mm-hmm. But they, they still try to lie about it a little bit. But, you know, it's it's tricky. Um, the, the, the most um, the most effort they made on the treatment side is talking about prayer, you know, as one does uh, mixed in with vaguely kind of trying to address underlying childhood traumas that cause gayness. Um, so like, it's like a mix of like psychotherapy for like trying to like, you know, you need to address the problems that cause the gayness. Then the gayness will go away. Also pray a lot, yeah. but they really underscore the treatment side of things. Cause they know it's all BS. Mm-hmm. They're more focused on the pseudoscience of how to prevent it from happening because they can make more money off of that. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, all just a cash. Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a massive grift, a grift yeah. that resulted in people getting, you know, killed and died. Um, Yeah. Um, is it is it time for is it time for an ad break? Speaking yeah. of grifts, no, <laughs> you no, know what no, kind of no, grift I no, like? No, no, is no. grifting. Okay, Sophie, I can't call myself a grifter. I can't openly threaten the heads of social media companies. I feel like what this country is, getting is this? Too PC. What did I say? Yeah. You couldn't openly threaten social me- heads of social media companies, Robert. I, I, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, I usually am. Continue. I was going to make a joke where I threatened the head of TikTok, but I don't know who it is. So we'll just actually go <laughs> to it now. Some guy in China. Some some guy in China. We're coming for you. <laughs> we are back talking about gay conversion therapy. Um, the be- One of the, my favorite things to talk about now, because I've done a lot of reading on it. Yay. Yeah, and part of the reason why my family escaped the cults to escape from Canada from the cult is so that I wouldn't have to go to gay conversion therapy when I got older because they thought I, me or my siblings could be gay. Oh, well, yeah. kudos to your parents. I Yay! Suppose. I'm glad Good. you didn't have to go through that. Yay! That's uh, god damn it. Yeah. What a fucked up planet. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Okay. I am not going to think too much about that one, Garrison, because yep. it's going to bum me out too much. Yep. As yep. Yep. All right. Um, the the blame that that Love One Out talks about for someone struggling with homosexuality is split between the parents' fault and society's fault. They go into a whole bunch of like pseudo Freudian bullshit about like a strong dominant mother and quite distant fathers or hostile aggressive fathers all being causes of this. It's so, like they, like. Which is weird because like Dobson often talks about like a dominant mother in his life. Yeah. Because you know, remember the the thrashing with the girdle? Yes, <laughs> yes. That is dominant. And also sounds like a kind of trauma. But <laughs> Yeah, I know. Maybe Dobson had other things going on. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um frankly, it's all quite boring for, like f- like Freudian bullshit they get into for lots for most of the causes. Um, a, a choice quote from one of the speakers who spoke at these conferences, who, who claims to be a reparative therapist, and this is them addressing parents, quote, if you don't hug your sons, then some other man will. Which is... I, 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 I think it's very funny. Ah, damn it. This is a reparative therapist. Yeah, you know, there should be a German word for, like, thing I want to laugh at, but I know was responsible for, like... Uh, more too much human misery for it to actually I, yeah, be funny yeah. but it's like i have to laugh at this because i got very close to this yeah. in my life 
The speaker also remarks, quote, there's no such thing as a homosexual, just misbehaving heterosexuals who can reclaim their identity through prayer and therapy. It's like a weird, a weird stance that Love One Out takes is like, there's no gay people. Being, there's, gay people don't exist. One can choose to identify as gay, but th- that's, that you can't be gay, actually. What you have uh. is you experience homosexual thoughts and if you can and if you can adjust those thoughts then you can actually be your true self which is a heterosexual they get into a whole bunch of like wow that makes that (laughs) makes that is impressively nonsense like you have to give it to him you couldn't you couldn't make less sense if you tried yeah they get into a whole bunch of like dumb psych psych pop kind of stuff they they really try to worm their way around a lot of a lot of this um at least seven uh, predominant social scientists have publicly called out and disowned focus on the family for deliberately misinterpreting their research to bolster kind of the homophobic claims that focus on the family makes so like they they try to appropriate people's like gender research and like parenting research and they like, use it very badly and these scientists are like mm-hmm. no that's not what we're saying at all you're very bad at what you're trying to do and really harmful we disown you and stop using our research because you're using it very poorly. Yeah, that needs to be some sort of crime. I don't know. That's not freedom of speech. No, because you're trying to make grift and make money yeah, off of the endangerment yeah, of human beings. Yeah. and Using, like, social science as a you're, cover. Yeah. You're kind of slandering the scientists yeah. in a way. Yeah. I don't know. They, 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 they're, I don't like, like that. They're misappropriating their work in yeah. a way that, we you know, they're also making money off it, so you, you, you could, mm-hmm. you know, you, yeah, they, they, a few things could happen. Yeah. So when the, when they're not talking about weird Freudian gender identity kind of stuff, but like two masculine mothers and bad parenting nonsense stuff, when they're not doing that, they're uh, they're discussing the other causes of the uptick in homosexual behavior, the advancing quote gay agenda. Part of their mission statement reads, uh, quote, we cannot escape the onslaught of gay propaganda that seeks to influence our churches, schools, businesses, and neighborhoods. That was written to a 2005. So like they were really they were on this gay agenda thing. Yeah, they were they were on it. They were like the first people really nervous in 2005 about the schools and businesses and neighborhoods with this onslaught of the gay propaganda advancing. The conference guide states that mainstream science is assisting the gay agenda in three main ways: normalization through desensitization, undermining parental moral authority, and equating homosexuality to heterosexuality. So three three main ways of science is helping advance. The gay agenda is by pushing these things into society. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yep. And the reason why, you know, all these these gay people are such a problem, kind of besides the whole biblical interpretation of homosexuality being a sin, which mean even some Bible scholars even question that um, for what was actually being written back at the time. A lot of of modern Bible scholars believe they're talking about uh, gay rape or uh, an older man abusing a child. That's usually what most scholars look at it now. Yeah. but besides the whole biblical interpretation thing, um, the fact that if gayness is so widely accepted as normal, um, the reason, re- reason why it's reason why it's bad is then kids of Christian parents will feel more comfortable coming out as gay, and will probably be more likely to not be Christians um, because of the homophobia in the church. And of course, evangel- evangelicals don't want that. But it, 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 there's that aspect, and also a big ex- a big existential fear for them it was gay marriage at the time that was really the thing that they they would have and the repercussions that gay marriage would have like what they laid out in the speculative fiction letter from 2008 the fear that gay marriage and possible resulting anti discrimination laws could threaten what they believed to be their freedom of speech and freedom of religion dobson wrote the whole book marriage under fire which i we don't even have time to get into but it's a, it's a whole whole big huge book that like, was very popular in 2004 and the conference guide that we've been reading from uh, has a chapter called Addressing the Pro-Gay Agenda in Your School. In this chapter, there's a checklist that's supposed to determine the level of homosexual promotion in your school. So, like, yeah, a, a lot of their fears are, like, if kids are gay, then they're going to not want to be Christians anymore, which yep. isn't great for a for-profit. Well, technically non-profit, but, you know, it's a media empire. It's, it's not good for churches and christian kind of publishers yeah if there's less christians and also you know they are really terrified of gay marriage and, what, sure. and what's going to happen those are kind of the two things that are they're really trying to push through this conference and that's what all their fear mongering about the gay agenda really is but these these 12 things listed as red flags it's so like in, in, in this chapter called addressing the pro pro gay agenda in your school there's there's these 12 red flags to look for in your own schools and it's really good it's it's a re- fantastic list yeah. um number one 
a safe schools non-harassment policy safe schools is like a brand that teaches like that has like um they do like uh they do like D- dis- discrimination training in schools and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, if 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 a school has posted a safe a safe schools non harassment policy, first red flag. If there's if there's guidelines against harassment, <laughs> first red flag that the gay agenda is being infected into your school. If you can't harass people, that yeah. is a red flag. Yeah. Uh, red flag number two: a homosexual student club. I mean, that's you know that's a fair red flag coming from yeah, that okay. perspective. Well, that, 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 it makes that more it fair. makes more sense. Yeah. Um, number three: non discrimination policy based on sexual orientation. So again, more just. Dis- Discrimination stuff being red flags. Yeah, if you can't discriminate, that's <laughs> definitely a, that's a red flag right there. Number four, programs to stop homophobia, hate, or bias. Just yeah, you wouldn't want to stop homophobia, just, hate, or bias. Just generally, not even just homophobia, but hate and bias too. Yeah, those are it's it's the the liberal gay agenda is getting injected in like a vaccine. Yeah, big yeah, problem. Yeah, and like a vaccine, like, like it's a all vaccine, poison. big yes. problem. Yeah, number five is pro homosexual literature added to the curricula and libraries. And a pro-family material, quote, pro-family material, uh, being bypassed or discarded. So I don't really know what they mean by that, but I'm sure I'm sure it was scary. Yeah, it sounds um, scary. Number, number six, <laughs> AIDS and sex ed programs. <laughs> As <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if they teach you about AIDS and sex ed, that's a problem. Not even gay yeah. sex ed, just sex ed in general. Yep. That's the advancing gay agenda in your school. Number seven, teachers that are homosexual. Of course, that's a huge problem. Can't, can't have that. Um, number eight, involvement in your school by the, le- uh, by the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network or the Parents and Friends of Lesbian and Gays, which are two organizations that help for like, gay rights. So if, they're, if they have any involvement in your school or whatever, huge issue. Uh, number nine, ce- celebrating Gay Pride Month or National Coming Out Day. Big, big problem there. That's that's the gay agenda advancing. You have to be careful. Um, exhibits or films on families by homosexuals. So, <laughs> exhibits or films about family that are made by homosexual filmmakers. Yay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which, again, I don't even know what they're really saying there. It's kind of undiscernible. No, it's, it's complete um, gibberish. But we have two more, two more Howling red flags. Nonsense. Two more red flags. Um, student, uh, students, um, uh, and parents with concerns being silenced. Mm-hmm. So, so that's that's good. Um, and number twelve, uh, a teacher in service meetings promoting diversity. <laughs> so yeah, you wouldn't want to teacher meetings diversity. that promote diversity. La- that's the final red flag. That if if you see these twelve things in your school, or even you know a few of them. This is this is means the gay agenda is advancing. Um, that sounds right. That's yeah, that sounds like it. how the gay agenda gets going. I, I was very happy looking through this conference manual and looking looking at the, when yeah. I found this page. I'm like, oh, yes, I have a few paragraphs to write now. Ah, oh, it was great. This the, the and the the, the, the manual is poorly designed too. Like it's ter- the graphic design is terrible. It is. It's like the worst era of 2005 like manual design. It's really bad and ugly to look at. It's it's a magnificent piece that I glorious found sto- archived on the are there, internet. Are there stock photos of people? You know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, like, really absolutely. Bad stock photos of like people yeah. with their families. Uh, like, <laughs> have you seen much like Christian? Have you seen much Christian yeah. like propaganda from the yeah. era? Oh yeah, you know all the same stuff. Um, so, okay, kind of now the saddest part of this is that parents would often force their gay children to attend this convention against their will. Um, these kids can be stuck with the choice of either going to this anti-gay conference or losing the love and financial support of their parents. That was really what a lot of kids talked about yeah. for this conference. It's like, I was forced to go or else I would be kicked out of the house yep. or I would, you know, my parents would disown me. So I was yeah. forced. And the thing about this, this thing is like, this isn't just, this isn't just like a gay conversion therapy program you go to. This is a traveling conference. So it, it, it can go to your town. Yeah. You're like, Oh no, if it goes to my town, I know my parents are going to take me there. God right. Damn. It's like, cause like, it's like, it's like an active Ugh. threat. It's not just like, oh no, I'm not going to get driven to Texas to go to this you program never for a know month. If it's going it's to that you come don't know where it's going to come to into your life. Horrible. It's it's, it's a nightmare. Really yeah. bad. Um, yeah. An NPR article from 2007 talks with a 16 year old kid named Brett. Um, Brett told NPR, "quote I, I did not want to come at all, but I guess you know I have no choice because my parents, you know, control my entire life." Um, his his parents drove 350 miles from San Diego to Phoenix. To attend this conference. Fucking Arizona. 
Yeah. And and, and the parents said in hopes that it will, quote, plant the seeds that, no. quote, one day their son will become straight. So af- after Brett was forced to listen. how that works, idiots. Yeah, I'm, yeah. It doesn't. It's not how it works, but that's what they thought it, they thought it's how it works. So like, e- they, they oh. even knew like, oh, even if he's not going to get fixed here, it'll at least maybe plant the seeds that he'll be able to be not gay later. Yeah. It's real, real sad kind of stuff. And like, this is not uncommon. Um, after Brett was forced to listen to all those speeches and testimonials and pleas from these, quote, therapists that his, quote, disorder can be treated, uh, Brett said to NPR, quote, don't tell my parents, but no, I, I know I'm gay. And like, their stories are really inspiring, but I know this is me and I don't really want to change. So like again, this is from like a Christian kid who's yeah. like, yeah, I understand their viewpoints. Like even like that's sad in the in yeah, a, in a that's point. Really sad. But he's like, yeah, I understand. It's kind of inspiring. But no, like this is who I am. Yeah, I can't not be this. And um, another really sad part is that the NPR uh, article talked to Brett's dad, and he said, um, he said, quote, the conference taught him that he needs to learn uh, to love his son unconditionally. So, like, this is the kind of thing where that gets, we'll talk about this more later, but, like, what the conference did is, like, because, like, these things are very bad, but, like, one of the things it was teaching is, like, no, if you have gay, if you have gay children, you still need to, like, love them as your children. Yeah. Which is, like, something that, like, these people needed to get taught. Like, this, yes. is, this is what Brett's dad learned. That is learned, a positive thing. Right? Like, yeah. Brett's dad learned at the convention, I guess I still have to love my son. That's the thing that he, like, took away from and talked to NPR about, which is really, like, I mean, like as bad, like, this conference is terrible and abusive, but still, that's, like, a, a net good from it. That's is, so fucked up. Like, that that's how messed so up it is. He was so fucked up yes. that going to this thing that was less fucked th- up than him helped. Yes. Yeah. That's really... That's just, I mean, yeah. this, everything... It's bad. a tragedy. Um, on Love One Out's old website, which has been, like since deleted like you know it's it's it, 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 it takes a while to dig for it in like the wayback machine but um every every time you change the page on the website it has a little testimonial from an, from an attendee uh which is a great source for terrible and sad quotes and keep, keep in mind these are quotes that they're putting up on their websites to make themselves look good yeah right these are like advertisements yeah the poll quotes and yeah shit. okay here's um here's a, a quote quote I've been struggling for 20 months with the fact that my son tells me he is gay. I've gone through all the first three stages of grief. I found this conference on the internet. We drove from Orange, Texas last night to the conference in Atlanta to begin on the reconstructive phase of our grief. Thank you for giving me hope for a loving relationship with my son. <sighs> Which is real bad. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. God so, damn. So, ag- again, it's like, yeah, yeah like... And I guess from the way that's written, I think it sounds like the hope that my son will be straight again so I can have a loving re- relationship with him. That's the way that I kind of read that as. Um, it could also mean, you know, hope that I can still love and still have a relationship with my son, even though he's gay. But I, I kind of doubt that if they drove from yeah. Texas to Georgia yeah. for this. It sounds more like hope that my son will be straight one day so then I can love him. Yeah. Yeah, not great. Um, from a 16-year-old, uh, they, they said quote, gay identified boy. Because again, you can't be gay. You can identify as gay. You're mm-hmm. not actually gay. It's that you're dealing with these homosexual feelings. Yes, so right. They write, yeah. from a 16-year-old gay identified boy who came because, quote, my mom dragged me into this. Quote, there were some things I did not agree with, but all, it was all presented with love, which I get really sad reading. Um, yeah, that's heartbreaking. Which really kind of messes me up on a fundamental level. Who, As someone who kind of discovered they were queer after being in a very hateful conservative environment for so long, including with like a whole bunch of like self-hating in my younger teens. That really gets me kind of angry reading yeah. stuff like that. Cause like dealing with realizing things about myself while having such like toxic, bad viewpoints, it's not, it's not great. Yeah. And yeah, this kind of stuff really makes me upset. Um, here's, here's, here's one. I actually, I like reading cause it's going to be, we, we can maybe laugh at this one and you know, oh, good. Um, quote, I was one of the police officers that worked at the Love One Out conference. I thought that God, testi- that's <laughs> such a sentence right there. God, what a sentence. Okay, sorry. I thought the testimonials were awesome. Uh, I was trying to be a tough guy, but I could not keep the tears from running down my face. The three other officers who were there with me said the same thing. It was a very moving testimony to the oh, power of God, God and how he pursued you. As- oh, God, that's so bleak. <laughs> 
<laughs> As police officers, no. we're, 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 pretty, we're often pretty rough on gay and lesbian issues, mostly making jokes and expressing disgust. The conference, made all, that. <laughs> the conference made all four of us more sensitive to homosexuals. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Everything about that is as bad as it could be. Like the fact that this conference again helped people who were even more bigoted than the conference be slightly maybe less big or at least less dangerously bigoted like is still incredibly fucked up. Yes. It's that's so bad. This police officer who's assigned as security is like I used to joke about gay people killing themselves. And now I think that's wrong. They should just be forcibly converted. I've improved. As police officers, we're pretty tough on gay and lesbian issues, making jokes and expressing disgust. Yeah. Like, what a great quote yeah, there. As police officers, like, of course all cops do this. <laughs> oh. oh, buddy. Oh. Someone should have gone to his, that shouldn't be, you shouldn't get to be a cop and say that. And they advertised it on their website as a good thing. Yeah, he was proud of that. He was willing to be like, uh, like all cops, I used to habitually make fun of homosexuals, but now I don't. Yay. The la- last last person we'll hear about who yeah. attended is from an article in the D- in the D- Denver Post in 2008. Um, mm-hmm. Christina Blake, 36-year-old D- Denver artist, moved to, Ca- moved to Colorado 10 years ago. So in, uh, in 1998. Um, for the state's, ex- she moved to Colorado for the state's ex-gay programs um, and underwent more than four years in two of them. She also underwent psych- psychological counseling. So she moved to Colorado. Again, this is where Focus on the Family is based. Yeah, they have a lot of like in-person stuff there, like all the time, mm-hmm. as well as these as well as these traveling conferences. Jesus. And she attended like multiple programs, not just Focus on the Families. Um, quote, I threw my whole heart and soul and life into changing. There was a period of time where I actually believed I was changing, but then there would be reminders. Oh no, still gay. Um, the whole time she suppressed her sexuality, her creativity disappeared. She gave up on transforming herself into a heterosexual. She said after observing many gay people leaving, uh, leading healthy, happy, vibrant lives. Quote, I still had to deal with a lot of the, a lot of feelings of shame, brokenness, and the failure that I had internalized from, from the ex-gay programs, um, Christina said. And the article ends by saying she no longer considers herself, consider herself, herself a Christian. Wow. But like, you know, so a person who's like lived in these programs for 10 years, trying yeah. desperately to change yourself because you think that's the only way to connect with God. Yeah. And just, you know, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't. And it left a lot of people dead. A lot of people killed themselves. We'll, we'll talk more about that at the end for the, kind of the stats on all those sad things. Um, I think uh, I think it'd be a little bit good to learn about the guy who kind of ran this whole operation because this, this is actually very important. Um, so Love One Out, as a, the, the, the program, was funded by someone named uh, John Polk. Um, John's story is not unique in any way from the people that run these types of operations. According to John, he came out as gay when he was um, uh, 18. This was in uh, 1981. Uh, he came out to an accept to an accepting family. He was he was you know he was he was fine at the time. Um, in his mid twenties, he found himself becoming despondent and even suicidal um, dur- in college. He at the time he attributed his unhappiness to homosexuality. Many years later, he would say it was actually because he was tremendously insecure and lonely. Around the same time, a university campus pastor introduced John to Christianity. So it's like in, in his mid twenties, he first kind of got, got introduced to Christianity yeah. when he was severely depressed and suicidal. So trying to reconcile his depression, gayness, and new potential path forward with Christianity, John signed up for a year-long residential conversion therapy program. What that means is you live in this, it's, it's like, it's like a, you'd like live in this spot. Yeah. Like they have like houses and dorms, and you live in this program. Sounds like a healthy place. <laughs> it's real, it's real bad. A lot of people died there. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he signed up for this year-long program. Eventually, he... He, he he stayed there for more than actually a year. He eventually got a job there, working at the same conversion therapy business that uh, that he attended. Um, him and a quote former lesbian that he met at the program got married. Um, they wrote a book together. In the nineties, John got put in charge of focusing the family's quote homosexuality and gender division. Oh, they have a division. That's a whole, good. Whole That's division good. dedicated. Yeah, you got You got to have a division. Um, in '98, he founded and led Love One Out under Focus on the Family. Um, in 2000, while on a speaking tour in Washington D.C., unclear if this was for a Love One Out conference or if it was just, if it was just another speaking arrangement, uh, John was seen and photographed s- sitting in a, a predominant popular gay bar 
by a known gay activist. When approached, John said his name was John Clint, which is his name is John Polk. But this guy calling himself John Clint said said he was gay. Um, after news of this spread around, uh, John told the media that he was just there because he was walking around and needed the place to go to the bathroom. And he said he didn't know it was a gay bar until until he went in. However, the people there, um, you know, saw him for like an hour talking intimately with other men. It was kind of a quote people said. Um, John right. later admitted to knowing it was a gay bar and has said. Um, no, you think? Yeah, yeah. And it said, quote, at a low point in my life, I went back to a place where I felt comfortable. Um, n- n- no matter what his intentions were, he was, um, no matter if he was actually going in knowingly to get sex or whatever, or if he was just lonely and kind of actually sad and needed a, like a familiar place, whatever. Um, he, w- Whatever it was, he was forced to resign as board chairman at the, conver- at the conversion therapy place that he attended. Um, but he still continued to work at Focus on the Family and led Love One Out until 2003. 2003, he suddenly quit his job at Focus and dropped out of the spotlight of becoming like a very famous ex-gay speaker. Um, John and his family moved to Portland, Oregon. Oh. Oh, oh good. Um, John I, went to- I know co- that no, town. This is, this is, yeah, you it's do know where we get tear gas. This is the town we get tear gas. John may be getting tear gas too, actually. Oh, good for him. Um, John, went, John went to culinary school and became a chef. Soon uh, opening up a successful catering business. Um, of his time in Portland, John wrote, On the outside, it was a happy life, but inside, I was torn. I deeply loved my wife, Anne, who still believed in like the XA movement, but I knew it would be extremely scandalous to embrace homosexuality after the career I'd had. It was, but it was more and more apparent to me that it was what I had always been. I was, I was gay. Um, the older I got, the lo- lonelier I was becoming. In, to- in 2011, I was driving down a suburban street and I saw two men holding hands. I burst into tears, realizing that I wanted to be one of those men. So John <sighs> got out of focus in the family because he realized he couldn't keep doing this work anymore. But he still was married to his wife for like a decade afterwards. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah. You know, just trying to slowly disengaging. Because like after you're in this for so long you can't just pop out very easily you have it's it's kind it can be a slow process for some people yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's deprogramming yourself yeah um john describes his time where i can't focus on the family like this i was in utter torment i struggled on and off with addiction and wanting to take my life i wanted to believe i wasn't gay so badly that not only did i lie to other people but i primarily lied to myself i wanted my homosexuality to change but the truth is for all the public rhetoric i was not one bit less gay Behind closed doors, behind uh, many of us in the ex-gay leadership at Focus on the Family would even admit this to each other. Um, we had this conversation many times. Quote, we, we know our orientation hasn't really changed. What has changed is our behavior, our way of life, how we see ourselves. Our sexuality has not changed. More and more, when I had to go, when I had to go up and speak to crowds of people about my gay conversion, I felt like a wind-up toy. I'd go back to my hotel room, fall in the bed, and start weeping. Yeah, which is which isn't that isn't uncommon for a lot of yeah. these people who are gay that ran these programs. Mm-hmm. A lot of them have since come out and said, "No, this is all bullshit. I'm so sorry for causing the deaths of so many people. I am gay, and I want to kind of live a quiet life now. I'm really sorry for what I have done, but I don't know how to deal with like yeah. the trauma of like not only me but also the trauma I've caused. Like, it doesn't sound like a great environment, and there's a lot no. of brainwashing going on and cult like stuff. So, like, it's it's hard to really. I'm not sure what consequences for the actions should be or besides or if people should just like be able to live alone for the rest of their life, like, like live by themselves and try to find happiness. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Um, in 2013, John made a public apology for all, all the harm him and the ex gay movement he was a part of caused, saying, quote, I do not believe in reparative therapy. I don't believe it changes sexual orientation. In fact, it does great harm to many people. I know that countless people were harmed by things I said and did in the past. Parents, families, and their loved ones were all negatively impacted by the notion of reparative therapy and the message of change. I am truly, truly sorry for the pain I have caused. Now, I, I don't want to focus on John Polk too much because he isn't the prime. He isn't the primary victim here. The primary victim are victims are like the teens and adults that killed themselves as a result of the rhetoric John and people like him, you know, spread. But I also know that like John knows that he he knows that as well, um, and I'm sure it's awful to live with. Yeah, and I, I I kind of do wish him the best. He's living as a gay person. I don't think he's Christian anymore. Just living in Portland, running a very successful catering business. Yep. I kind of wish him well, but Good. I don't want to focus on him too much. Yep. Um, due to financial restraints, we're coming to the end here, thankfully, because I'm I'm kind of done with all of this. Um, due to financial restraints in 2011, uh, in 2009, Focus on the Family sold Love One Out to Exodus International, of a, a huge conversion therapy umbrella 
organization that, that had worked with Focus on the Family in the past. Later on in 2013, Exodus totally shut down, um, ending, ending Love One Out as well, stating that conversion therapy does not work and apologize for the pain they've caused. And this was like the place. <sighs> this, was the, this was like a massive conglomerate of gay conversion therapy programs. So like this was actually huge news when this shut down. Like this was massive. Yeah. Um, like I know, I know people that have been sent to Exodus International programs. Jesus Christ. Um, Exodus too. Like what a... Yeah, what it, a yeah, what a nightmare! Yep. All of that news is. It's bad. It's all terrible. Um, also in 2009, John, uh, no, J- uh, J- James Dobson left Focus on the Family amid philosophical conflicts with his successor Jim Daly. Um, Focus on the Family has under since um, went down a uh, has under since gone down a downsizing, and has dialed back its political activism, mainly kind of focusing on their media division now. Um, it's year, it's yearly operating budget still hovers around ninety million dollars. So like they're still they're still very active. Yeah. Um they're just not like the massive political force they were in the nineties, where they had like hundred and fifty million dollars. But like still they're they're still they're, they're still they're still a notable organization. Um b- despite Dobson being gone and Love One Out defunct, uh not much has changed on the rhetoric focus on the family spreads regarding homosexuality. They currently have like over 30 live articles that I could find through scrolling in like 10 minutes about the prevention slash treatment of homosexuality um, with many other articles about adjacent gay issues and stuff, plus selling countless books on the subject on their website. Um, one article opens up with the imagined question prompt saying, uh, what can we say to our teenage son who, who just told us he's gay? I'm devastated. One minute I'm so angry, I could scream. The next I could just sit and cry. We love our son, but we don't want this influence in our home. So th- that, that's how they start an article. Yeah. Um, yeah. Articles offer helpful advice um, for interacting with friends and family members that, quote, identify as gay. And such, such helpful advice that they list is, uh, see a person, not, not a homosexual. Yeah. So, like, uh, just the sheer... Because a homosexual is not a... Okay. Just, yeah. like, the sheer notion that they need to, like, establish that people are still humans. Like, the, the fact that they need to say that really shows what their audience is and who, yeah. and what they're actually doing. Yeah. Well, yep. that I hate. Yep. Um, although I'm pretty sure that the understanding um, uh, that this is now um, a failing cultural battle, right? Like, th- they understand that this is now kind of a losing battle um, because they've turned their attention most more recently towards transgenderism as the new thing that's going to destroy America. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> because, that makes sense. Because gays are gays, too, they're too, too accepted. Ex- accepted. And now there's Republican gay people. And it didn't destroy America. Yeah. We, we have a gay marriage, and everything is still well, basically the same. All right, now, I, I will say... <laughs> America has been kind oh, of destroyed, yes. but, I don't, happened, but I don't blame gay marriage. I don't blame gay marriage or the, or far the left, trans people or the for four that left matter. Supreme Court. Yeah. They did no, not. I, I, yeah. I do blame the Supreme Court for some but of it. Not the far left, <laughs> yeah. Supreme, not the six to three far left leftist yeah, communist no, Supreme Court. Um, yeah, they didn't do that. Um, no. Yep. Uh, uh, Mostly, <laughs> I blame not Glenn Drudge, Beck. the Drudge okay. Report. I, bra- I blame Matt Drudge. That's Drudge. fair. I know Glenn Beck was very popular at the time. Yeah, but the, they all got popular. All of these guys that we're dealing with now, like including Alex Jones, got yeah. their their first initial like really big national exposure thanks to um to to Matt Drudge, who now is kind of anti Trump. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's been a weird journey for Matt. Um, I mean, he's still I think pretty conservative, but he just doesn't like Trump. But he was like he was he was the. We'll talk about Matt Drudge someday, maybe. Yeah, so they're, they're selling lots of books written in the past five years about trans- transgenderism on their website. There's, there's countless articles, um, whereas their articles about homosexuality have taken like a dip. And, like, they're, they're, not, they're not writing as many new ones. They're mainly focusing on transgender stuff. If, if you didn't grow up in the evangelical Christian scene in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s, the first time you may have heard of Focus on the Family is probably from John Oliver's segment on, uh, when he, on his segment about Mike Pence. Because in 2017... Mike Pence spoke at Focus on the Family's 40th anniversary because celebration. Because of course he did. Yeah. Pence is, uh, Pence has called Dobson a close personal friend That's and mentor. Of course he has. All of this is great. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, then uh, Pence said these words about Focus on the Family, the organization. Quote, 
The truth is that Focus on the Family has been a force in American families, a force for good, for the past 40 years. Millions of families, and families like mine, are indebted to your work. And let me assure you, there's one other family that's truly grateful for your work and for this great ministry. And I promise you, Focus on the Family, you have an unwavering ally in President Donald Trump. Of course he does. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Real, real good. During this episode of Last Week Tonight, John Oliver talked about Pence speaking at Focus on the Family's 40th anniversary event and highlighted both Pence's and Focus on the Family's history of promoting gay conversion therapy, which because Pence did too. He, he ran on that platform in the 90s. Um, yeah, which is why I'm really concerned about him for gay issues even, even more than Trump. Like, that's my thing. If like if Trump ever do- got impeached and Pence was put in, I'm kind of more scared of him for queer stuff because mm-hmm. Pence is legitimately terrifying on like, yes. the, re- on the, like on the religious front. Uh, Mike Pence is... It's like my, my Donald Trump is the guy who I think is capable of wooing Americans into authoritarianism, but he's not a competent authoritarian. Yeah. Mike Pence, I don't think is capable of wooing in the it, same way not. Trump is, yeah. but he would be a competent authoritarian. Yeah. I mean, because Pence is called Dobson, like his greatest mentor and yeah. close friend. Pence so, like, is very right, It's those kind of stuff that's very scary. Yes. Like Dobson helped him get elected uh, initially. There, there's a strong case to be yeah. made that the most frightening thing about Trump is not Trump himself or even his MAGA people, but the degree to which he has empowered the dominionist Christian movement. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Which in which Dobson was a huge part yeah. in uh, pioneering. Yeah. So uh, because of John Oliver's segment, um, this prompted a response from the head of Focus on the Family, uh, the, the now head, is, who's uh, Jim Daly, quote, the satirical late night talk show host's secreed was not just vicious in tone, but also vulgar and vile in every sense of the word and way. So that, that was the response Focus on the Family had to John Oliver's segment about them, <sighs> which I think was great. Yeah. Um, but then also in the same statement, Further confirming the organization's continued support of conversion therapy in a press statement saying, quote, we support the counseling and availability of professional therapy options for unwanted homosexual attractions or behavior. So that's what they said in a press statement in, re- in response to the last last week tonight episode. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, in, in, in the last week tonight episode, John Oliver unveiled a new book that his team had written about the vice president's bunny, Marlon Bundo, um, who, of course, is actually gay. Um, with all the profits going to the charities um, uh, AIDS United and the Trevor Project, the book sold more than uh, the book sold about uh, two hundred thousand copies in the first two days. Massively successful. A lot of money was donated. It was really good. The Trevor Project does a fantastic work. Yes. Um, yeah, was was a very good thing that John Oliver and his team did there. At the time of this episode's publication, uh, 20 states currently ban conversion therapy for minors, including Colorado, which was a very recent, like in the past, in the past, I think, a year, Colorado mm-hmm. banned it for, for minors. And that, that's where Focus on the Family is based. Around 28% of U.S. LGBT youth who have been to conversion therapy have has attempted suicide within the past year. So, like in the past twelve months, they, that's that's happened compared to twelve percent of, of of LGBT youth who had not gone through conversion therapy. So, it more than doubles your chances yeah. of committing suicide if you attend LG, if, if you attend conversion therapy Whew. as as a queer person or as as, as a queer, as a queer youth specifically. Yeah, it's morally identical to just firing a gun into a crowd of, yeah. of children. Yeah, um, according to the San Francisco State University, um, uh, according to their, their their study on conversion therapy. And and used to, and uh, and queer youth, um, LGBT youth that go through conversion therapy can be eight point four times more likely to report of having attempted suicide. Good God! Um, Good God! Yeah, that's uh, that is five uh, almost six times more likely to report higher levels of depression. Uh, three and a half times more likely to report the use of like illegal drugs for coping, and three and a half times more likely. Uh, more likely to have HIV and STDs for you know, people that go through just, conversion therapy. All of those, it, it just sounds to me, Garrison, like you're saying all of these are all the benefits of God's love. And yeah, that's all I've written because that's, mm-hmm. all, that's all I could write before I started break, yeah. breaking down yeah. and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> becoming unhealthy at a mental yeah. level. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, enjoy this fun episode, everybody, that Garrison <laughs> wrote for you. He had, his, he had his chance to make a Behind the Bastards episode and he made it it made me very sad. Um, and normally I make people sad while laughing manically because I've had to deal with the depressing thing. And now I'm just sad and Garrison's laughing. Yeah. And I understand the harm that I've brought to the world now, <laughs> but I'm not going to stop. You guys, yeah, no. Yeah. More of this. Mm-hmm. More of this. Anyway, um, <sighs> yeah, that's the episode. Robert, do you want to plug um, your pluggables? 
Actually, for, I first, absolutely let, do not. First, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to plug the Trevor Project. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, they do very good work on assisting queer youth in times of crisis. Um, also, if you're in Britain, uh, the, the 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 Mermaids Foundation is great for um, trans issues. I know there's a few new trans hotlines in the states that I need to I I, I need to learn their numbers for them because they're they're relatively new. But yeah, the Trevor Project is great. Mermaids in the UK is great. A um, whole bunch of stuff that you can, you know, help for. There's a, oftentimes you'll see legislation going around to help ban conversion therapy for minors um, in your state. At, get involved with that. That's one of the few things where le- legislation actually is possible. I know there's a whole, you know, thing about voting or not voting. If you're, you, sh- you should vote for that. If you see it happening, v- vote for that because it can save a lot of kids' lives. Yeah. That's the episode. Yay. Yay. Real fun. Uh, so, Garrison, yeah. where can people follow you? If you want to see me talk about Proud Boys and the Feds and Tear Gas, you can, I'm on Twitter at, at yeah, Hungry Bowtie. Yeah, you can find us on Twitter. Do you also it have would have been Instagram? several days ago, assuming Robert we survive tomorrow. Instagram, but I have, have an Instagram, Instagram account, but I've never used it. I've, it's oh. very, it's completely blank. See, I told you, only the youths have Instagrams, and they don't like to use them. I don't no use one's mine. on Instagram. It's, 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 it's Zuckerberg. I don't, I don't want to... Go yeah. on that. The only social media apps are Twitter and the TikTok. Twitter and TikTok. I, I mean, I, 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 I do enjoy I don't have TikTok. TikTok, guys. It sounds like it's a healthier social media platform than any of the a, others. A lot of great uh, queer youth expressing themselves in yeah. healthy ways. Yeah. Thank God we're banning it. <laughs> All right. The episode's <laughs> done. Bad.